Hey ladies and gentlemen, Stephen here from Rudder Lessons. Welcome back to another video. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate it and I hope that this video finds you well. And in today's episode, we're gonna be discussing the newest release by the company, The Harmonist. This is a 2020 release and it's called Moon Glory. So make sure to stay tuned. Now, before I begin the review, I do want to mention that if you like this type of content, if you like fragrance-related videos, top lists, giveaways, all that jazz, please do consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on that red button in the corner. And this way, whenever I do upload future fragrance-related videos, they will get delivered straight to your feed. You never need to worry about missing any of my future uploads. And also, please make sure to click on that notification bell as well. So here we have it, the newest release. This one came out just this year in 2020 by the company The Harmonist. I actually have had the opportunity to sample all of their fragrances. I do have an official discovery set from the company and I must say that they all smell incredible. The perfumer for this fragrance is Guillaume Flavigny and he is a perfumer over at Givadon. He has composed so many incredible fragrances. Fragrances for the company Fragrance Dubois, uh, Giorgio Armani, if I'm not mistaken, and Moschino, the list goes on and on. Very impressive resume. And uh, I'm hoping to have the opportunity to chat with him on a personal basis and a personal level very soon. So here we have Moon Glory, and I'm so happy to be in possession of this because as I will show you on camera during the presentation segment, it comes with this limited edition collectible and it says Dr. Wu for the Harmonist and I have number 43 out of 2000. And I always love fragrances that have this sort of limited edition collectors appeal to them and I'm happy to have this one and I will treasure it and not to mention that the smell is absolutely incredible. So this is the type of fragrance that broadens my horizons and allows me to have appreciation for notes that I otherwise would not wear in a perfume. And so this is a floral fragrance to the extent that it does contain a Lang Ylang and this Hawaiian jasmine note that I don't find to be endolic at all. But nothing about this fragrance smells feminine to me. As a matter of fact, in the opening, you are greeted with this beautiful jasmine note that is not overly endolic. It has this combination of lychee and honey just drenching it in this syrupy goodness. It's such an amazing fragrance and it's actually inspired by the way that the flower smell at dusk in Hawaii. So I always love it when there's this personal story attached or affixed to a composition and I'm really excited to tell you more about the smell. But let's start things off with the presentation. So the box for this one certainly conveys luxury. This is Parfum Strength. You have the name of the fragrance written towards the bottom here on the front and it does open up to reveal a podium in which the bottle rests. And as you can tell, it has these really amazing graphics all over the bottle. It even has this foam padding on the inside to make sure that the bottle doesn't rattle around. All of your pertinent information may be located on the bottom of the box. And on the back of the box, it just says, Harmony is the source of beauty. And the inside of the box also comes with this circular piece of wood. It just has a carving of a uh, crescent moon here on the front. And then on the back, it says Dr. Wu for The Harmonist, and mine is number 43 out of 2000, so this is a collectible piece. The bottle for this one is also quite nice, beautiful in fact. It has this H on the top here for Harmonist, and it has the name of the fragrance written on the front here, and this is a really nice sheen of silver. On the bottom, you will see the serial number printed right on the bottle. The cap for this fragrance does not click into place. It is a snug fit, so you can probably get away with picking it up from the cap, but I would recommend that you don't uh, just because it is a heavy bottle. The distribution on the atomizer is very wide. Let's continue with the smell. So in the opening of this fragrance, you are going to get this gorgeous touch of honey. And it's a honey that is not overly pollen heavy and it's not overly sweet to the point where it's cloying or headache inducing or anything like that. It just finds its way mellifluously in the composition and I believe it works in harmony with those other ambery notes that you're going to find in the base. You also find a little bit of peru balsam and as a balsamic note or a resinous ingredient, it actually does have a touch of sweetness to it, very much like labdanum or even benzoin. So you have the honey working in accordance with that ingredient in the base and I feel like that combination is so powerful. However, in the opening, you have this tropical vibe 
that I think is established by the Elang Elang and also the lychee fruit. And so that combination of that sort of exotic floral nuance with that unconventional fruity approach is so unique in this fragrance. And of course you have other uh, unique ingredients that I can't really speak much on. Like there's a, this note of orchid cactus. I don't have a whole lot of experience with that. I'd be lying to you if I even told you that I knew what it smelled that, like. As far as I'm concerned, it might even be a fantasy note. I'm not entirely sure, but I would love to gain some more insight into that. But really what you're going to get is this beautiful jasmine note in the opening. It just smells so natural and so organic. It reminds me of just being in a jasmine field, uh, you know, kind of a garden that is uh, overwhelmed with these uh, jasmine growths. And you have this honey, lychee, sort of slightly green touch to the fragrance. It's exotic smelling, it's different. And that's, I think, one of the things that I appreciate the most about this fragrance. It doesn't smell like a fragrance that I've encountered before in my journey. There is such a level of uniqueness about it. And I also love the fact that the combination of the different notes manages to veer it into this territory with the sandalwood and the base and all these other things that is totally unisex. You know, I think initially somebody might be inclined to look at the Hawaiian Jasmine and the Ylang Ylang and say, oh, okay, I think this one is gonna be a little bit uh, floral and a little bit feminine. But once you spend more time with it, you realize that it's ambery, it's resinous, it has that sandalwood, it has the honey, it has that earthy texture about it. It's such a spectacular fragrance. I think it's so well put together. And I've actually been smelling a lot of other fragrances by the Harmonist. There is one that smells very heavily of iris to me. There's another one that smells very heavily of frankincense to me. Obviously, if you do have interest in me covering those fragrances on this channel, please do let me know and I will do my best to acquire a bottle for review. But as far as it pertains to Moon Glory, such a spectacular release for 2020. When I do my top 10 niche releases for 2020, you can guarantee this is gonna be in the top three. I love this one so much. And also my wife really enjoys this one as well not just smelling it on me but she also likes wearing it herself which is a big plus let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment now first up in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell this is an incredibly unique fragrance one of the most unique fragrances that i have smelled especially for the year of 2020 i think i have been overwhelmed with so many new designer releases and it seems like they all sort of follow this tonka bean you know, mass marketed designer trend. And this is such a breath of fresh air to be able to smell a fragrance that is done with such unique notes by such a masterful perfumer with so many years of experience underneath his belt. And I'm so happy to be in possession of this fragrance right now. The overall smell on this one is also very, very good. Uh, again, very appealing. I love the fact that it comes across smelling so natural and organic. And I like that it's like I said, opening and broadening my horizons into exploring some floral ingredients that I would otherwise dismiss. But the combination in which it's done in this fragrance is just so delightful and I love it. I cannot praise this fragrance enough. Longevity on this fragrance, I would say is about seven to eight hours. It's not overly strong. I And I think that's because while it does have this interplay of the resins and that ambery backbone in the fragrance, it's not done in this overly concentrated way to the effect that it overly relies on that base. And so it does last a long time, seven hours, but I feel like the base doesn't overshadow or overwhelm the other stages of the composition. So longevity is really good. Projection is fantastic for the first hour and a half to two hours. And I would even say it does radiate beyond an arm's length if you overdo it with the application. So just be cautious. This is quite strongly concentrated. I don't think you need any more than four or five sprays that will take you a long way. In terms of the versatility, I think it's 100% unisex. I think anybody of any age can wear this one. Something about the floral ingredients that are used in here makes me feel inclined to wear it when the weather gets a little bit warm outside, uh, but also the presence of the sandalwood and the amber and the resins makes me feel like wearing this fragrance when it's a little bit colder outside. So I can see this one being worn in all seasons, 
all occasions. There is something about this fragrance that smells formal. So I probably wouldn't wear this one on a casual basis, but again, it's your money. You are free to spend it however you wish. These are just recommendations. And the presentation on this one, absolutely gorgeous. The uniqueness of the bottle, the collector's appeal of this little talisman or amulet, if you will, that is included in it, I think is really, really cool. And my final verdict on this fragrance, Honestly, I absolutely love the scent. I think it's one of the best releases of 2020. Like I said earlier in the video, when I do uh, put together and compile my list of 10 fragrances that I consider to be the best for 2020, this will inevitably be in the top three. I can't speak highly enough about this fragrance. I hope you have an opportunity to go out there and get your nose on it. At the very least, see if you can acquire a sample so that you can wear it, spread, you know, spend some time with it, see if it resonates with you, and see if it's a fragrance that is worthy of being in your collection. But I love having this one. I'm so happy to have it. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in. That was my review of Moon Glory by The Harmonist. If you own or have tried any fragrances from this brand, please do go ahead and let me know what you think. Leave a comment down below. Also, if you are new to this channel and you took something of value from this video, I would love it if you could support this channel by subscribing to it. All you have to do is click that red button in the corner. And this way, whenever I do upload future fragrance related content, it'll get delivered straight to your feed. You never need to worry about missing any of my future uploads. And of course, that includes fragrance reviews just like this, but also giveaways, unboxings, top lists, and a whole lot more. Thanks again for watching. I love you all. We'll see you next time.